okay. Now, amino acids are, can actually be seen in biochemistry, and we also see amino acids in chemistry. So, what we're going to be looking at today is amino acids in chemistry. We are not really going to be biological importance or biological synthesis of amino acids. We just want to look at amino acid as a chemical compound. Okay. Now, first, what is amino acid? As the name implies, amino. So, amino acids are high derivative of carboxylic acid. You may want to ask, what is carboxylic acid? Carboxylic acid has RCOOH. Okay? Where the R here is an alkyl carbon chain. But in the case where this alkyl carbon chain has an amino substituent attached to it, we therefore call it amino acid. Now, this is actually the, um, the structure of amino acid. Okay? Amino acid has four components. Now, the amino group, which is this, sorry, the carboxylic group, which is this, the amino group. Now, the hydrogen, and of course, this R is known as the side chain. Okay? So, just like I said, the R here is a side chain, and the NH3 is the amino group, and um, COOH is the carboxyl group. Now, basically, in the two six one exams, now, what are the nature of the questions most likely you're going to see? Alright, um, you will not be asked to start learning the structures of amino acid. As a matter of fact, most of the exams is going to be subjective. So, the exam will likely be subjective. So, if you just take the statements and they actually want you to put a dash, and they we want you to supply the answer. So, we have actually seen the definitions of amino acid, and we've seen the structure of amino acid how it goes by. Now, it is important for us to know that amino acids can be classified based on different parameters. You can classify amino acid based on their structure, based on their nutritional value, and of course, based on their um, uh, metabolic fate and the rest of them. So, basically, we want to look at amino acid classification based on nutritional requirement. But we're going to come to that later. Now, if, like, just like I said, this R here, in terms of structure, is what differentiates one amino acid from the other. Now, if you take a look at these um, two structures I put up here, this is glycine and this is alanine. Okay, now if you notice, the side chain for glycine is considered to be H, and the side chain for alanine is considered to be CH3. So if you actually change this H and put CH3, you have alanine instead of glycine. Now, we have 20 um, amino acids that is normal. Amongst those 20, 19 follows this pattern, except proline, which does not really follow this pattern of the side chain. Alright, so 19 of amino acids. They all have side chains, and the side chains can be replaced, and of course, with something else to get a new compound. Now, we talk about classifications of amino acids based on nutritional requirements. Now, based on that, we have two major types of amino acids. We have the essential amino acids, and of course, we have the non-essential. As the name implies, the essential, they are basically needed by humans. Okay, the body cannot synthesize them, so they need to be taken either through our meals, our food, or whatsoever. Okay, so. Anytime you say something is essential, it's, a, it's actually necessary for life. That means your body cannot synthesize that. However, your body needs it. Okay, so it has to take it externally. An example of essential amino acids, we have lots of them. I'm just going to give us a few examples. We have the valine, we have the leucine, we have the isoleucine, we have the phenylalanine, we have the trionine, and we have the methionine. What about non essential? We have the glycine, we have the alanine, we have the cysteine, we have the tyrosine. And these particular ones are being synthesized in the body. So if you actually take it in externally, it's actually useless. Okay, the body has no business with it. The body does not need it externally from you because the body can generate or produce it by itself. Okay. Now that's like I told us earlier that the amino acid we are treating today is basically um, the chemical aspect of amino acids. I cannot talk about the chemical aspect of a compound without talking about their reactions or their properties. Okay, so amino acid as a chemical compound. Because it possesses a carboxylic functional group and it possesses a minor functional group. And if you remember in chemistry, functional group determines the chemical reactivity of the compound. So, by virtue of these guys possessing two different functional groups, they tend to be a reaction based, based on or associated with COOH. They also tend to be a reaction associated with NH2. So, once we take a look at reactions associated with the amino group, which is the NH2, Now, what I'm just going to do here, I'm going to explain the reactions we have on the board, and then it's going to look out for um, questions in your exams because they might repeat this or they might actually give you guys this to actually um, react. Now, what we say reaction or properties based on associated with your mind group, it means that this is actually what is going to react. So, you need to take note of this reagent. 
In exams, they will not actually tell you and um, give um, reactions of amino acid based on or associated with amino you know. They will say, what will be the product of the reaction when amino acid reacts with either ACL, nitrous acid, or acyl chloride? Now, any one of these three that reacts with amino acid is definitely going to react with the amino group. Every other thing in the compound remains exactly the same. What is going to change or where transformation is going to take place is just here. Because this other part will not take part in this. Alright? Now, when we get to reactions associated with COOH, now you'll get to see the types of reagents that will react with this COOH. And those reagents will not be the same as the ones that will react with the NH2. So please take note of that. The most important thing, know the reagent and of course know how the products have been formed. Alright, now look at this. We have NH2 reacting with this. Now this NH2 is seen as a base. Amines are seen as a base. So what is going to happen is that this amine has a load pair here. Plus, this nitrogen has a load pair. It means that this HCl will split as H plus and Cl minus. Now the H will add up to this H to form an NH3. And once it's NH3 here, since this N was initially neutral, and of course hydrogen is positive. Now the moment hydrogen add up to form NH3, this H, this N becomes positive. Because if something was initially neutral, or something was initially zero, if you add one or plus one, the overall becomes plus one. Right? I was something initially was neutral and you add positive. Of course, you expect the stuff to move from neutral to being positive. Right? So this nitrogen was initially neutral, no charge, right? It had a little bit. The hydrogen from this acid, since it is a plus, added on to this one to form NH3, and of course, we we'll now have a positive sign here. Now, however, this minus sign will actually form what we call a spectator ion. Now, since there is a plus here, and this guy himself is minus, there tend to be an attraction. So the point is actually going on here is not really a bond, it's an attraction. Okay? So there will be an attraction between the positive charge on the nitrogen and the negative charge on the chlorine to draw to drag this chlorine closer to this nitrogen. And of course, we're going to have a salt. Right? So this one we're going to have, we're going to have a salt. So in case you're being asked, what will be the product of amino acid when it reacts with a mineral acid. Mineral acid, they can change it to be H2SO4. Mineral acid must always be HCl. What if I change this guy to be H2SO4? If I change it to be H2SO4, this one I'm going to have. It becomes plus H2SO4. Now, first thing for this one, this is what you're going to do. If this guy is treated as an acid, I'll form H plus and HO4 minus. So obviously, this is what I'm going to have. Of course, I'll first of all form my NH3 because SH needs to add on to this one to form NH3. And of course, it goes to the positive side. Now, the negative side will now have to tag along. This becomes HSO4 minus. Okay? So take note of that. So let's look at the next reaction. The next reaction says, um, when they react in the oxygen nitrate 3, they give out the solution of nitrogen gas. Now, this acid you're seeing here is nitrous acid. Please, it is not nitric acid. HNO3 is actually nitrate 5 or nitric acid. This is actually nitrate 3 or nitrous. Now, this is um, just in case. Now, this is nitrous acid. Now, when nitrous acid reacts with this, now this is actually what's going to happen here. Let me show us that. Let me show us how we got this uh, transformation here. Because how did we move from NH2 to, to OH? And of course, with the loss of this gas, which is the N2, nitrogen gas, and water. Now look at this. I'm, I'm writing this NH2 out so that will show us how the whole transformation took place. Alright? Now, first, remove. Take this N and take this N. We form N2. Okay? What is left is H2 and HO2. Now then, take one O from here and take one H from here. This becomes OH. If you take one O from here and one H from here, this will reduce this to one and this H goes off. Now this becomes H2O water. So anytime 
um, amino acid we have nitrous acid. We're going to have a uh, hydroxy derivative of that amino acid. That means the OH is going to replace NH2. Now, NH2 is going to go out as a gas, right? So we have NH2 here, and of course we have water. Just in case um, you're being told in exams to complete the reaction, because they can actually give you a reaction like this, and you're asked to complete such reaction. Bear this at the back of your mind, this is how the process actually went on. Take the N from here and form N2, right? And let me do it this way. You remove this N, you're left with H2 and this. Now take one O from here and take this H. If you remove one O from here and remove this guy, you form your OH. Now this O will now come down to this H2 to form water. So that's how we got this product here. Alright, now let's try that. The third reaction here they say when am I going to react with acyl chloride? Acyl chloride is also known as acid chloride. Now they form a mind and an acid. Now let me write that reaction here. Now this is the formula for acyl chloride. COCl, which is written as this. This is acyl chloride. Which can also be known as what we call that, we call acid chloride. So you can choose to call it acid chloride, or you can choose to call it acid chloride. Now, what actually happens there? What is what actually happens here is what goes on now. Now, remember, the reaction is based on NH2, so we are really interested only on NH2. So let's see how this reaction took place. So I'll come here and write this. I'll say RCOCl. Now, why am I using R here? I want to let me put a stroke here because there is also R in the amino acid. Now the reason why I'm putting this R here is so that you can actually differentiate the R that is coming from the acyl group and the R that is coming from the amino acid. So you have plus R, CH, NH2, COH. This is Now we need to form an acid. The acid is always ACL. Where is the cell going to come from? The cell is going to come from here. Where is the H going to come from? The H is going to come from here. So if I move CL from here, and I remove one H from here, I will form HCL. It then form means that this structure, remember I told us that this can be written as this. So if you remove the CL from here, and remove one hydrogen from here, because amino acid have NH2. If you remove one H, this guy reduces from 2 to 1. And then you remove one CL, you form your HCL. What is actually going to happen is that this remaining A side group, this is A side group, this A side group is going to join onto this point. Alright? So this becomes, let me write down this one first. We have R, CH, NH, COOH. Okay? Now this point will now attach here. This is the point of attachment. O, which is this, and R, which is your bar. Do not forget this bar because it starts once again to tell us that this R was not what was initially. This R is coming from this. Now let's use a simple example. Because in exams they don't really use this. Let's use a real acyl chloride. Let's say, let's use CH3. CO this. This is ethanol chloride. Plus, let's use this amino acid formula. So, when this reacts with this, this Cl will take one H from here and will give rise to ACL on the product side. Now, what is going to remain here? This remaining part, okay, do not forget that this ideal structure for this guy is this. This is the ideal structure. So when you remove this CL from here, the bond is actually on the carbon. So the carbon is going to attach to this remaining H. So this becomes, you write down the amino acid first, R, CH, COOH. This was going to be NH2. But since one of the hydrogen has been removed to form HCl, now we're not going to join this part. This becomes C, CH3. So this place that is CH3 is actually this place that is the R here. So I think for this explanation, just in case in exams if you're asked to give, or they give you a reaction associated with the amino group of amino acid, you can equally carry it out effectively and efficiently.
All right, um, so now let's quickly look at the reactions or properties of amino acids that can be associated with the carboxyl group. Remember the, the, the previous uh, uh, class or the previous topic we treated reactions of amino acid based on associated with the amino group. So we want to look at the reactions associated with the carboxyl group. Now look at the first one we said. Reaction with aqueous alkaloid to form salts and water as the only product. Now, just like in the case of acid and base reaction, okay. Now, when an acid is, is actually considered as an acid right now, and this is considered as a base, so when an acid reacts to the base, we're going to have salt and water. So basically, what is the reaction um, mechanism here? This H will actually be given off. This H will go off, and this N A. Now this is actually what's happening here. The NDA replaces the H, right? And this H comes out, picks up the OH, and of course forms the water here. Right? So it's more like um, if I have something like this, COOH plus NAOH. Okay, now this NA replaces the hydrogen here, and of course the H comes out, picks up the OH, and then you form water. So this particular reaction, in the case of the terms, it depends, they might decide to give you a named amino acid, or they could just simply say, Give the reaction, um, you give the product of the reaction when amino acid is treated with an alkali or a base. Okay, so when an amino acid is treated with an alkali, what we get is salt and water. And now let's look at the next reaction. It's a reaction with alcohol to form ester. This is more like um, reactions in chem 260. When ester, when alcohol reacts with um, carboxylic acid, it's usually going to form esters and water. Now, basically, what is the mechanism here? Now, recall. Now what is actually happening is that this R, this time around, is what is replacing the H. And the H comes out, picks up the OH, and of course forms the water. Alright? So when this happens, this R, as you can see here, is a, is a stroke on the R, so as to differentiate this R from this other one. So when this R picks up this H, now it replaces the H, and the H picks up, replaces the R, and we have water. So this R now comes here, this is now what we have here. And this H picks up the OH, and this is now what we have here. Okay? Now, having said that, you can, you can see that there is an ACL here. And if you could recall, when we treated and reacted to amino acid based on um, amino group, ACL will always react to the amino group here. Right? This is an acid, this ACL will react to the amino group. The H of the ACL will add up to this two to form NH3, and the CL will add up here, and of course we have. Our product. So in case of it as when carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol, what we're going to have is esters and water. Now what if it replaces R with um, CH3 or replace it with any alkyl group? What is going to happen here? And this CH3 will replace the H. And this is what we're going to have. So remove this and put CH3 here. Right? Now, let's look at the next reaction. We said when you react amino acid with sodium hydroxide, it decarboxylates to form primary amines. It decarboxylates to form primary amines. Now, what is actually um, decarboxylation? Okay, decarboxylation is simply the removal of carboxyl group, which in this context is just more like removing the CO, right? So you're going to leave back the H. So when you remove, when you decarboxylate, you remove the CO and leave back the H. Now when you leave out the HD, this H will add on to this previous one to form the CH2 here. And of course we have our NH2, which is what we have here. It's not in primary amine. Now how do we actually cope with the side with the byproduct? Now this CO that just came out here, CO2, this is CO2, there's going to pick one go from here, and it becomes CO3. Alright? Now it's going to take two NA from here. And this becomes Na2. Okay? And of course, we have this. And do not forget that we we'll see how H2 hydrogen that is going to be left here and one oxygen, which of course is going to form water. So, in case you're being asked, the carbonization of amino acids in the presence of sodium hydroxide is going to give us primary amine. So don't forget that. Now, when you react amino acid with carbon carbonates, right? When you react to amino acid with carbonates, what you're going to have is going to be the release of CO2. So actually, this is what happened here. This is more like, you know, 
a base. This Na replaces this H. So this Na enters here. Alright, once it enters here, we now have this. Now this H comes out and actually enters here we form H2CO3. Now if H2CO3 breaks down, H2CO3 will always give water and CO2. It's actually a must. So that is how we got this water here and of course our CO2 here. Alright, so let's finish up this. Now, so with this now, we've actually concluded the reactions of amino acids associated with double zinc. We have four of them. We have the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. Now, let's look at um, properties as attributed to the entire molecule. I had to list them out to make it very easy for us. Now, remember, amino acid contains an acid functional group, and of course, it also contains a base functional group. So, because of this, right, the acidity and basicity is considered to be very, very low. So, they are considered amphoteric. Amphoteric simply means they can act as an acid and they can also act as a base. Alright? So in this case now, amino acid, if you bring a base with amino acid, amino acid is going to react with it. If you bring an acid, amino acid is going to react with it. So that is why it is called amphoteric in nature. Now, they exist as an internal salt known as vita ion. Just in case you're being asked, amino acid exists as an internal salt known as dash. The answer is Zwitter ion, which is known as dipolar. Zwitter is another name for dipolar. Take note of that. Okay? Now, the pH, as high pH, amino acid is going to exist as a negative as an anion. At a high pH, at high pH, amino acid exists as anion. And at low pH, it's going to exist as a cation. Just take note of that in case you have been asked. At high pH, amino acid exists as dash anion. At low pH, amino acid exists as dash cation. However, the pH at which amino acid exists as both cation and anion, which is zwitter ion, which is dipolar ion, that pH is called the isoelectric point. And each amino acid has a distinctive isoelectric point, and that is why we use isoelectric point to separate different amino acids. If I actually want to separate amino acids, I'm just going to use the isoelectric point because no two amino acids can have the same isoelectric point. And with this now, we've actually concluded reactions of you know topic of amino acids. So please check um, look at the, the I'm going to drop the past question so you can actually practice. Please, if today's your first time viewing our channel, please do well to hit the subscribe button. 